Welcome back. So this time we're going to be talking about something that I could have talked about earlier and it has to deal with uh, selections and, and decision making and it's not part of the it's not part of the if out family but it has its very own so that is called the switch statement. So switch statement has this syntax switch and then it has to have an int. So for example, let's say a, a selection. And you place selection there. So based on selection, it's going to fall through to one of the logic branches. So you have switch, and then you have the selection. Uh, now you may notice that this is different than the if statement. You actually don't put a Boolean condition in here. So you can't do Boolean conditions. It's got to be a single choice. And then you give it its body just like everything else and use the keyword case and whatever cases you may have. You may have case two, for, for example, or case one or case zero, whatever the case may be. It has to be an integer. It can't be a string. It can't be anything else. It has to be an integer. So let's say, for example, that we have case one and we have an actual execution statement, some, something um, that does something. So for example, we could just do a printf statement. But you can really write anything. I mean a function here. I believe you can even have a body. So let's say for example that you have, um, let's say you do a printf and you say case one. And another piece of this, now you notice that when I said case one that actually I have a colon here. It's not a semicolon, it's a colon. And then I have the printf with the semicolon. And normally you have a break after that. If you don't put a break there, it's going to fall through to the next statement. So we have this statement and we say case two, for example. And then we have um, another break. Let's let this one fall, fall through. And have you ever let one of them, wait, well, actually, it can't fall through there. Uh, actually, it can. Okay, let's see. Let, let, let it fall through. If you intentionally let one fall through, make sure that you comment that out and say fall through so that whoever comes back behind you knows that it's not a bug and that's actually intentional. So you may want to comment that. So let's go with case three. And in this case, uh, case three, we're going to do something a little bit different. So you do case three, and you can actually have another case four. And we can say print f case three and four. So anytime you get case three or case four, if they select three, it'll fall here. If they select case four, it'll fall here. Uh, and <laughs> Actually, we had let the other one fall through, so let's not do that just yet. Let's go ahead with this one and make it case three because the other one's already going to fall through, so I don't want too much falling through. So, and then we say break, and we'll make this one case four and case five. And case five, and then we say again break because we don't want it to break, fall through, and then we finally say default. And default, anything that's not a value of one through five is gonna fall in here. For example, negative one, zero, anything like that. So in this case, we just say print f case default case. And I don't think it's necessary to break through, I think, unless you did the default somewhere else. Typically, the default is done at the end. I don't know if it can be done. Really don't care. Really, that's where you should put it, that it was works. I and mean, it works. And unless you want to really, really get pedantic about it, you know, go for it by all means, experiment with it. But really, you just do this, and you can say break. And so the selection will show. Now, for example, the selection right now is always going to be one. So if we run this right now, it's always going to be one. You know, it's always going to do that. So if we run it, let's see, case one, no matter how many times we do it, it's always case one. However, what if we did 
this and say and we'll make it fun 0 through 7 and as you know we have to do a scan S and we're gonna scan in an integer and we'll store it in the selection so now that we have this and we store it in the selection and we run it through it's gonna be up to us to do it and to make it a little more interesting so we don't have to keep restarting every time what we can do in this case is just put all this wrap all of this up in a loop so that it just continues prompting us so we'll just say like for example we'll say while uh, selection less than less than seven so seven will be the breakout or we can say what's well, about selection not equal to seven how about that so as long as selection is not equal to seven once they enter selection seven this is gonna break out and we're gonna wrap this up and that's indent for readability and so now this is going to do a while loop as long as the selection is not seven and we start off with one so it's going to evaluate to true the first time it's going to go through and as you select these it's going to keep going and then seven will have it break out of the loop so let's go ahead and give it a run enter selection zero uh zero to seven okay so we know there's no zero in there, our case, so that would fall into our default case. So you see, it goes to our default case. Now, if we did, if we select one, it's just gonna print one. For example, case one. Oh, let's let's do something else. Um, let's put uh, to fix this here. Okay, that's better. Okay, and now let's let's stop it. And let's run it again. Okay, so we said zero. We saw what zero does. Okay, default case. So we do one selection. So what happens if we do two? Well, remember we didn't add a break at the end, so it should do two and three. And they're actually joined together. You can see them joined here together, case two, case three. And so it did selection of both of those. Let's put a space just to kind of separate these. Okay. And <clears throat> so, so now if we do, for example, case three, it's just gonna do case three. And if we do um, if we do for example um, four, now four is gonna execute both four and five because four and five are kind of grouped together. Notice they're grouped together, but they're still separated by a colon here. So, and they still have their colon. It's like they have it, it's almost like they had a, a empty a empty statement, falls through to the five, so it'll execute both of those. So if I say, for example, four, it'll do four and five. And of course, if I do seven, it's gonna break out of my loop. And <clears throat> You don't see it, but you don't get the you don't get the prompt anymore at that point. So that's it for the switch selection. I didn't want to cover it with the if statement because it's, it is significantly different. It's not as flexible. Uh, don't confuse it with switch statement in other languages because they do behave differently. So some of the other languages have a lot a lot of different options. They they can do different things. So don't mistake that if you know it here you know it in C++ or Java I'm not sure what it's like in C++ right now I know in Java it's definitely different they have their own set of rules so just don't confuse it most languages well I wouldn't say most languages many languages have some form of a switch statement select K switch statement <clears throat> but they have this and this is just to speed up you know kinda shorthand your decision logic when you have integers and remember we could have put uh, different instructions here typically you don't want to have a lot of logic because then it becomes really hard to read if you do have a lot of logic put it in a in in maybe a function 
So if you had a function, you place the function, make your function call from there, and let that decision pass whatever parameters you need to pass and move through. But that's it for the switch statement. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe. And until next time.